Today, I would, want us, I would want to introduce to you a child that I want you to adopt. At the end of this service, I want you to adopt that child and uh, let's see how you can survive with him. The Bible records I don't have much time and I'm happy I'm a man of few words. So, it works well for me. The Bible records in the, in the book of 2 uh, Samuel a story of a man, Amon, who loved, I can't say loved, or, who took his own sister and raped her. But this sister, Tamar, was a sister to Absalom. I want you to adopt a child. In most cases, uh, love is shared or is shown simply because there is something in for me. If there is nothing that is coming my way, ah, see you later. So, Absalom was so disturbed and he did not get justice on the raping of his sister and decided to take the law in his, in his own hands and he killed Amun. After killing Amun, Absalom ran away to a place called Gesha. It took Absalom two years to plan the death of Abu. And he stayed in Gesha for three years without coming home. The Bible records that after, by the way, Amon, Absalom, and Tama are all children of King David. Right? They are all children of who? of King David. So after David had born before Ammon, Ammon is dead. After he mourned for Ammon, he now missed Absalom. And Joab, who is a king, who, who is the king's, uh, what, what do they call them now? What is it, uh, chief of arms? Probably if he was today, he is, he is, the, he is the chief of arms. The right hand man, he discovered that somehow David is missing Absalom. And he says, I know what. He made a scheme, took a woman, and said, You know what? You dress like someone who is, who is bereaved, and put on your black clothes, and show that cover your head, and go to the king. And he put words in the mouth of the woman. She goes. The plan worked. Eventually, Absalom came back. After how many years? Three years. When he came back, I want you to adopt a child. When he came back, he did not see the first of King David. King David said, you know what? Absalom can come, but I can't see him. Let him stay in his house. So Absalom stayed in the house for three years. For two years. And then he said, Why did you take me from Gesh? He sent a word to Joab, I want to see the king. Joab did not come. He sent the second message, Please, Joab, come here. Joab did not come. He said, Okay. So he sent his servants to bear the field. Of Bali, of Joab, of, of Joab. So he sent the field right. When Joab saw fire and discovery is coming from the servants of Absalom, he comes and says, Hey, what are you doing? Said, yeah, hey, this is what I wanted. I wanted you to come here. Because I called you, you did not want to come. Now that you are here, go and talk to my old man. I want to see the king. Eventually, Absalom is admitted 
in that place. The Bible records that when Absalom was in the inner court, he then went and sat by the gate of Jerusalem. So everyone who was coming in, bringing the case to King David, he would stop there and say, where, 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 where are you going? No, we have got a case here, we want to see King David. Nah, he, David, he is not a good king. If only you can bring your cases to me. So he started now taking the cases of people, hugging them and kissing them. And he started developing favor with people. After such a time, to a point that most people of Israel loved him. Now listen to this. When he had gained the hearts of the children of Israel. They built a tent above the house. And Absalom slept with the concubines of David in the daylight, in the presence of every Israelite. He didn't hear me. When David was in Jerusalem, Absalom by the gate, he had Absalom now in favor from the people. They built him a tent on the rooftop so that he can sleep with the devil's concubines. In the daylight, and everybody was a witness. I wanted to adopt a child. Now he came, after 40 years, Absalom comes to his father and he says, Daddy, uh, remember the time I was in Gesha, I made a vow that I need to, to satisfy. Can you please allow me to go back to Gesha? I want to pray to the Lord of heaven. David being David, understanding what prayer means and what a vow is, he said, my blessings, my son. You cannot, you can go. As he left, he took some guys with him. He took some men with him. And he sent spies into the tribes of Israel and said, when you hear the trumpet sound, you must come out and say, Absalom is king of Hebron. I want you to adopt a child. This is a child that killed a brother. He's a murderer. He ran away into Geisha, self-exile. He is a deceiver. He is an adulterous person sleeping with his father's concubines. He is a traitor. And as he went with these guys and said, when you hear the trumpet sound, just say, Absalom is king of, of Hebron. When David heard that this is what is happening, he called his whole house to order and said, guys, time up. Let's leave this place. And when they moved, when they went out of Jerusalem, he left the ten concubines in Jerusalem and he leaves Jerusalem. Once you are out of Jerusalem, you have left the throne. You are not a king anymore. When you get out of Jerusalem, he is no longer a king. Now he goes out. When he is out there, people started now coming back together and say, no, King David, I think we can do this together. We can fight Absalom and we can gain your kingship together. So they agree. Now, this is where the sermon is beginning. What I was giving you was a background to the story. I want us to read from 2 Samuel chapter 18. 
2 Samuel chapter 18, verse 5. It reads, And the king commanded Joab, Abishai, and Itai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man, even with Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave all the captains charging concerning Absalom. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we are about to embark on your work this morning. May you open our ears, may you open our minds and our inner hearts that we accept your word as it says unto us. Help us, bless us, for it's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I said in the beginning, I want you to adopt a child. In your minds, maybe you adopted uh, Amon who died, that was quick. For some of you that have presented only Absalom for you to adopt, this was the man. And David, in 2 Samuel, he says, he commanded Joab, Abishai, and Itai, and he says, deal gently with this matter. I, I, I want you, when you go to war, deal gently with this adulterer. When, when you are out there, please deal gently with this war. De, de, how do you deal gently with someone who has done so much to you? What was David trying to say? What was David trying to portray? What image was David trying to give by calling Absalom a young man? Some of us A simple thing we left on our wives in, 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 before sunset. A simple thing. She, can't, she didn't prepare my meal well. She has got a name immediately. He, he came home late. He has got a name immediately. But David, with all that Absalom did, he says, deal gently with the young man. When we sit in a church board, and here we are discussing in him, how do we talk about it? Cares. A simple thing, a simple SMS that came in the phone, you call the in-laws, you call the sisters, you call your brothers, you call your relatives, you report at work for a simple SMS. David says, deal gently with this young man. For my sake. Now the story says, the war began. In every war, there are individualities. People die. But the record says that the woods killed more people than the war itself. And Absalom, he ran away. When the war was hot, he ran away. He was caught by, by, by the oak, oak tree. He was hanging by the oak tree. And the horse that he was riding went away and he remained hanging between the heavens and the earth. Rejected by both the heavens and the earth. He was hanging in a place where heaven cannot accept him, neither earth could accept him. While he was hanging there, he was not dead. I want us to go to Second Samuel chapter 18. Verse 10. And a certain man saw it, and he told Joab, 
and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hanged in an olive oak. And Joab said unto the men that told him, And behold, thou sawest him? And why didn't thou smite him? There to the ground. And I would have given thee ten shekels of silver and a girl. Verse 12. And the men said unto Joab, Though I should receive a thousand shekels of silver in my hand, yet would I not put forth my hand against the king's son. For in our hearing, the king charged thee and Abshai and Itai, saying, Beware that none touch the young men Absalom. There are some people who have never and have never been Adventists. That reminds Adventists that is Sabbath. There are people who are non Christians, but they would remind the Christians how to handle wives in their own villages. This is the man. He was not a soldier, but he said, I overheard. When the king was given charge, he said, do not touch Absalom. But Joram, who was instructed, who was commissioned, he said, why didn't you kill him? Joram had the distance to kill Absalom, regardless of what David had said. What did God say to us? Some of us were going to be reminded that you are an Adventist, you can't dress like that by an Adventist. Some of us were going to be reminded that take care of your children by an Adventist. People that know nothing but they'll tell you, I overheard the king. I know what your church stands for. You are drinking. I know what your church stands for. Why are you doing this? And you go ahead and you continue to drink. You, regardless of what a non Christian is telling you, what he had the king said, you continue on your way to kill Absalom. How many Absaloms are we killing? Are we killing day in day out? That mother in law that doesn't want to see you at all, David is saying, deal gently with my son. That brother in law that gives you a headache, David is saying, deal gently with my brother in law. That very daughter in law of yours, when you have made an oath not to see him, David is saying, deal gently. Unconditional love. The love that David showed to Absalom was unconditional. He was the murderer. Absalom said he's my son. So David said he's my son. He was an adulterer. David said he's my son. He was a traitor. David said he's my son. Unconditional love. Why would David go all the way? When Absalom died, David was deprived of an opportunity to forgive. He was waiting at home for Absalom to come. So when messengers came in verse 28, when messengers came from verse 29, and the king said, is the young man Absalom safe? Still he calls him a young man. Brothers and sisters, regardless of where we are, God calls us. He loves us. Young man, how many of us, after adopting Absalom, would have said young man? Would we not have called him by his name, his actual? In most cases, you, you, your sin becomes your profession. I didn't hear it. Your sin. That one time sin becomes your profession. Ah, that thief. Absalom would have been called by any one of what he did. 
But David decides to call him young man. And he says, is, is, is my son Absalom safe? He was waiting to receive Absalom back and to demonstrate the love, the forgiveness, and the mercy that he himself received when he took Uriah's wife. He was saying, now is the chance. Let me show to Israel what it means to forgive. He was waiting, like a prodigal son coming home, and the father waiting to see him. David was also expecting that one day, I will show my son what it means to forgive. Remember, David was a shepherd. One thing that he knew, when a sheep goes astray, he will leave the 99 and look for one, but he does not kill it when he finds it. He will bring it home to the fold. So when he sent them, they was hoping that they are going to bring Absalom back into the fold. Unconditional love. Let us read from Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 23. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 23, he says, do I take any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord. Rather, am I not pleased when they turn from their wicked ways and live? It was said for David that Absalom died and repented. It was said for him when he looked down and understanding how God deals with humanity. He understood that God does not rejoice in the death of anyone who dies, but that a sinner repents, waiting for repentance that never was, waiting for forgiveness that never was. That was the sad story of Absalom and David. I don't know about you, how we deal with each other, I don't know about you. When you see them hanging on the oak tree, what do you do? When someone does something wrong to us, he's hanging by the oak tree. When you go about talking ill, evil about that person, you are killing him. The father wants him alive. When you go out there and you are harassed, disappointed, whoever does that to you, remember the Father wants him alive. We say, seeking the lost. We are all lost as we are seated here. We all need the grace from above. We are all sinners as we are seated right here. We all need the grace from above. And God, when He looks at us, He does not see us by the sins that we commit. He sees us by potential people who are meant for salvation. I don't know, in closing, how much we can do to bring Absalom home. In our church boards, in our youth ministries, David is hanging, Absalom is hanging by the tree. David is waiting for him to come home. Don't destroy them. It took a man who never knew how to fight to remind Joab what King had said. Maybe. 
I also need to be reminded of what the team says. I think it's your wish as well that you need to be reminded of what the king said. But when you are reminded of what the king has said, please don't go beyond the reminder. The biggest mistake of Joab, he had an opportunity to listen to this man and reference back to what David has said. He could have saved Absalom from dying. But the Bible says, he actually said, you are delaying me. You are wasting my time. There are some who are reminded you cannot eat pork. By people who are not Adventist, but they still connive when you make I'll come at the back. Just, just keep a piece for me where no one sees. When, when, you, when you want to have a drink, just keep, keep my in the boot of the car. I'll just come and stay there by you like, uh, like we, are, we, are, we are just chatting. But you are not the least. Uh, don't worry about that. Remind him and to go beyond. In closing, I wonder if there is one person, only one, who would say, either you are the one hanging on the tree, or you have good people that are hanging on the tree, that you feel you need to save them by prayer and by song. Is there one who feels I need to be saved from this tree where I am hanging? I am in a position where the earth is rejecting me and heaven is rejecting me. Before Joab arrives, I need to be saved. Can someone stand? That one person stand as we offer a word of prayer. Can someone? who feels his enemy and would want to come down and go back home. The Father is waiting. I'll give one more minute before we pray. It is always God's desire that we go back to Him. It's always His desire, unconditional love. He looks beyond our faults. Amen. You should come and pray for us. He looks beyond our faults. As we are seated wherever we are, I'll ask the elder here to pray for us. That we have a forgiving heart. Let's not kill them, those that are hanging. For there's a father in heaven who is waiting to forgive. Let's surrender them in the hands of the only one who can save them. Take all the pain out of our hearts. All the grudges, they have no space for our salvation. I would not want to lose salvation because of somebody's fault. But I will lose it if I do not find it within me to forgive unconditionally.
some of us may be sitting in the place of Joab, taking the law in our own hands. Even when we know the truth, we do not do the truth. Father, we ask for your grace. That Lord, if we have opportunity to do good, help us to have a kind heart of David towards his son. But Lord, should we be those who have acted like Job, help us, Lord, that we should respond with a merciful heart to those, Lord, who are hanging between earth and heaven. Lord, we thank you because none of us is deserving of your grace. And therefore, we pray, dear God, that as we also hang between heaven and earth, that once again, Lord, you show your mercy to us, that you will redeem us because you do not have pleasure for the death of a wicked person. We pray, dear God, that the message from your servant will help us to understand that love that brought you to this earth to hang on the cross. That love that uh, draws us closer to ourselves. That love, Lord, that you seek us every moment, even when we are buried in our sins. We pray, dear God, for your mercy and for your love. We ask that you will also spare blessings for your servant. This is our prayer in Jesus' name.
we ask for traveling messages. Bless each one of us. Continue working within our hearts and hearts that purify us. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.